Hello class. In this video, we're going to learn about reflections. So we learned in a previous lesson that a reflection is a type of basic rigid motion. So we know that the segment lengths are preserved and the angle measurements are preserved under this transformation. But there's one property that's not preserved. Let's see if you can figure out what that is. And look at the names of the vertices. So hopefully, you notice that on the left-hand side, when we name them going in alphabetical order, we have A, B, C, and that's going clockwise. But on the right-hand side, we have A prime, B prime, C prime going in the other direction, counterclockwise. So orientation is not preserved. So let's look at the questions now here. We want to look at the perpendicular bisectors of A, A prime, B, B prime, and C, C prime. See so if we can figure out what's going on with those. And then we want to talk about what happens with the point where this segment A, A prime touches segment D, E. Just think about that for a moment. So here we have a diagram, and we already have the perpendicular bisector of C, C prime drawn. And it looks like that that coincides exactly with segment D, E. That segment we reflected through. Let's see if the same happens with A, A prime. So remember, just put your compass on the endpoint and open it up more than halfway. And you can draw a circle. And then do the same at the other endpoints. This is getting a little bit messy, but we should see that something special happens here. It turns out that these points of intersection also lie on that same uh, line of reflection. And it turns out that that's the same case for uh, B segment B, B prime as well. So it turns out that all those perpendicular bisectors are all the same as the line of reflection. And so since the perpendicular bisector here, what do you know about AO and A prime O? Well, since it's a bisector, it cuts it in half. So you know that those two measurements must be the same. So O is halfway in between them. And here, zoom in a little bit, we want to actually figure out where the line of reflection is. So we just learned that the line of reflection is the same as the perpendicular bisector of the, any of the segments formed by a point in the pre-image and the corresponding point in the image. So let's connect two points that correspond here. We can do C and C prime. Those are close together. And so now all we have to do is construct, construct the perpendicular bisector there. So let's see, open that up. And draw your circle. Do the same at C prime, same radius. And here's our line of reflection. Oh, let me fix that. Let's see, that looks a little bit better. There you go. All right, I was a little bit off the flow of my circles. I fixed that. So now I have a better perpendicular bisector. And what do you notice happens if we measure the distance from B to B prime? Well, that's 12. And so halfway must be 6. So each uh, pair of corresponding points are equidistant from the line of reflection. Here's the notation for a reflection. Use uh, lowercase r this time. And the one parameter is the line that you're reflecting through. So we're reflecting point P over line L in this case. And here's the formal definition. OK, fix the notation. So here we have. The first part of the definition is that any point on the line of reflection doesn't change. It stays the same. That's what this first line says. And for every other point that's not on the line, 
you get a point on the opposite side of the line so that the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of that segment. And that's what we looked at over in this construction. So when we reflect D over this line, the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of D, D prime. That's our formal definition. And remember, it is a basic rigid motion. So the segments are mapped onto segments of the same length, and the angles are mapped onto angles of the same measure. And so here's one where you want to find the line of reflection. And there's no points labeled here, so you have to figure out a pair of points that you might want to use. So let's look at this bottom right-hand corner. When we do the reflection, which point corresponds to that? Remember, it's reflected, so the orientation is switched. And so we reflect over a line somewhere in here. And so it should be this point in this corner that's closest to it. And so if we connect those and construct the perpendicular bisector, we will have the line of reflection. So put it on one endpoint, open it up, draw your circle. Let's see. As long as it's more than half, it'll work out. And flip it around, put it on the other endpoint. And here we have, well, let me get that right. So here in blue, we have the line of reflection. And finally, how do we actually perform a reflection? Well, they started us off here. What, we're, what we want to do is we want to find the point on the other side that's equidistant. And so you can read the steps here. I'm going to walk us through them. So let's look at B first. I'm going to show you with B how to do this without drawing full circles. So the idea here is that you open up your compass more than the distance to the line of reflection. Let's use red. And you want to draw an arc that cuts the line two times. And at these two points of intersection, we don't want to change the size of the compass. We want it, uh, the point down here to be equidistant, uh, this, at the same distance from this point to B. And so we just draw an arc down here. And since it's a circle, that radius will be the same. Right? The radius uh, from this point, let's give it a name. Let's see, we already had FG, let's call it H. So the distance from H to B is going to be the same as the distance from H to B prime down here. And let's do the same over here. Let's call that point I. So put your pivot on I. Make sure it's the same distance. Don't change how big it is. And make it so that they cross down here. And this point where they cross is going to be B prime. Okay, so for making this a little bit clear, I'm going to delete these arcs that we used, the extra information. Not extra information, but just the uh, we, how we did the construction. And I'm going to show you how to do it for C, but with full circles. And it's the same thing. It just looks a little bit different because we're drawing full circles. I prefer just do arcs because these get messy uh, with the more points that you have. So draw a full circle here. Put your pivot on one of the points of intersection. Make sure it's the same distance from that point to C. And draw a full circle. We use blue here. Do the same thing at the other point of intersection. Make sure you're on the green one, the original circle we drew. So that distance to C should be the same. If you see, when you draw the full circle, it should go through the points that you're reflecting as well. Oops. So. We have C prime down here with these cross. So there we go. And now, if we connect our three points in the bottom, we will have our reflected triangle. So we'll connect A prime to B prime, B prime to C prime, and C prime to A prime. And there we go. And so why did this construction work? Well, we know we wanted. DE, segment DE, to be uh, the line of reflection, right? The segments always contained in a line. 
And in order for that to happen, we know it has to be a perpendicular bisector. And so for this to be a perpendicular bisector, we know B, and the distance from B to the line has to be the same as the distance from B prime to the line. And that's what this construction ensured. We made it so that they were equidistant from the line. All right, so in this lesson, we learned about reflections. Thanks for watching this video.